computer. Okay, beautiful. Welcome everybody to the 8th of February, 2024 Supply Chain and Trade Finance Special Interest Group. We're going to continue in today's session, uh, planning discussions from the last session back, when was it, 25th of January, something like that. And I think our goal here is uh, we, we had a lot of ideas. I think there's some more ideas that can come out today here. And this is more, my thought is, if we could come out with a top two or three ideas that we could have out for other people, a more extensive vote, uh, people who can't be here, people who are on the periphery, people who might want to join us, that we could get excited about something uh, there. If we came out with a top two or three, I'd be pretty happy from this, this time. I don't think we need to settle on one thing and say, oh, this is it uh, here. But we also don't want to have 10, 20 things here, I, is, is my current thought. Um, right. We did not get very much, um, so, or I guess, might very much feedback on online. So we may want to go back with that too. But I think <clears> two or three <throat> makes sense to help us uh, sort through it. So, uh, Christos, thanks for uh, joining here again. Appreciate that. And uh, let's see here. Um, our session here, we're part of Hyperledger. So, all are welcome. We're glad you're here, whether you're online uh live or whether you're online and watching us on youtube or off the wiki page um here uh please since we're an open community here and i trust i mean don't say anything confidential that you wouldn't want to share with the uh, public uh keep that to yourself but all the rest of it is is fair game and we're going to have a good discussion here um next time this is going to be the last of our formal planning sessions for a, probably a while here. Um, next next time, February 22nd, we're going to have Lee Land Kemp of uh, Everledger uh, join us, and she's going to talk about very specifically uh, some of the new things that uh, they're doing at Everledger. So looking forward to hearing from her in a, in a couple of weeks. And I know she's looking forward to uh, sharing uh, these thoughts here. So please uh, tell lots of people about it. Um, let's see here. Do we have, I think, Jeff, you're going to talk after that. Kind of go through a little scenario and then we still have the yeah. 21st of march and the 4th of april as open slots uh so if you know of somebody who you think is really good would be a really good story to uh have others here uh please let us know after that we i think we have uh two or three sessions already booked for april and may so uh Things, things are coming together and people are wanting to tell good stories and people want to hear good stories. So with that um, here, Alicia, Jeff, anything I forgot here? Why don't we roll into this? I said, you know, I have that um, program done. So there's some PowerPoint stuff. I'm going to have to do a run through, but we're ready to go. I say we. Okay. Uh, we're ready to go with that blockchain demonstration. I've got trade finance in there. I've got AI in there. I got IoT in there. I got Excellent. An NFT tokenization example. So the blockchain will be running on screen. You'll see what. All right. Uh, it's an example of a coffee company buying raw beans from farmer co ops and it tracks that supply chain from that point, all the trucking, all the way through into a warehouse in Newark, New Jersey. And then from there, it's tokenized. And I'll give a that's why the PowerPoint accompanies it, but it's ready to go. Then the, if we had a if I had to do it today, it wouldn't be ready to go. <laughs> it's yeah. easily ready to go in nope, a month. We're good. We're good. <laughs> that would be why we I moved haven't, it. I haven't, I haven't had a run through. Yeah. And with this is anybody important. else. I've run through it, but. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, so Jeff, I, I have up the screen here. I know last time mm -hmm. we didn't go through all of these. I'm thinking it might be worthwhile to run through. I don't know, Ayan and Christos. Did you get a chance to look at this list at all since uh, we last? Okay, I am shaking his head. Christos, did you get a chance to look at this list? Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, cool. Am I getting out uh, all right? That was yep. scratching the ears a bit. Sorry about that. Uh, well, uh, I did get a brief overview, but... Uh, I haven't really the, got the time to, you know, uh, think hard on it and uh, maybe propose something. Okay. Uh, I mean, everything is interesting. Uh, I'm not, 
I mean, uh, I'm lacking a bit of context here, maybe, you know, as uh, of the of the objectives of uh, the SIG, you know. Uh, so, and I'm not uh, actually uh, a supply chain, uh, like, or trade finance professional per se. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can get, like, a couple of minutes uh, to introduce myself, like... Uh, Please. Since already... I'm not either, Christos. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, who was that? Who was that? Yes. See, I'm not a professional on it either. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Let me try to also uh, open my cam. Uh, I think I should be here. Yes. Hello. Hey, Christos. Uh, hey. Hey, uh, good uh, evening from Greece here, Thessaloniki, Greece. Oh, Thessalonica. Um, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I go as a software engineer by profession, uh, really into the blockchain, uh, both uh, technically and also as a, from a business perspective. Uh, so uh, my background is uh, I've uh, I started with public blockchains, you know, uh, as a Web three also, uh, you know, played around a bit, uh, tried uh, to get uh, a grasp, you know, on this new paradigm shift, and uh, I ended up uh, working uh, for a research institute in uh, Greece. Uh, last year, we implemented a pilot uh, with uh, ACS for uh, parcel delivery on the blockchain. Uh, I worked on uh, Hyperledger Fabric for the implementation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I did a couple of smart contracts and uh, we made a proof of concept uh, together with the, the ACS company, the courier company. Uh, and right now, I my kind of let's say the bridge that got me here uh, is that I am involved in a research project which is uh, it does not uh, involve a technical aspect. It does not uh, involve uh, an implementation of a blockchain as the previous one I mentioned, but it is more like exploring the blockchain uh, solution for the agri-food uh, sector. So this is my current, uh, let's say, interest. Mm -hmm. Although I, I consider myself a blockchain maximalist, so like, uh, you know, everything uh, for me can and should go into the blockchain, you know, like quote unquote, of course, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so yeah, here I am uh, still testing the waters, uh, considering the SIG, you know, uh, if I'm a good fit, uh, and vice versa. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see Welcome. how it goes. Welcome. Oh, yeah. uh, Christos, I'm uh, just curious, have you had a chance to look at the ebook that we published in, in November? No, I haven't yet. I downloaded it, but I didn't get the chance to open it. Okay. A couple uh, of the of the cases that we that we discuss are agri-food related. We also, if you look at our previous meetings, you'll also see multiple pre presentations by people who um, are talking about agri-food related supply chain management platforms. And we have a few more coming up. So our next meeting, Leanne Camp of Everledger, Everledger has done a lot in the agri-food area. In April, we have someone from Farm to Plate and okay. obviously they are agri-food focused. So if that's something you're specifically interested, like me, that because this is my this is what had me come into the um fall down the blockchain rabbit hole. This is a good fit, and there are resources for you on our site. I'd also suggest you take a look at the how to get involved page of our of the wiki, because that's going to give you information how to create your Linux Foundation ID, and also um, different ways to different ways to participate. 
Okay, thank you very much, uh, Alicia. I have uh, watched uh, some of the previous uh, uh, recordings uh, from the SIG in YouTube, and uh, I particularly recall uh, one with uh, Trusty Food, I think uh, was the name, uh, an Italian uh, startup uh, doing uh, uh, agri-food stuff with uh, Hyperledger. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, great, great. Good. Good. Thank you. And I just put the link in, uh, in the chat here so that if you don't have that link, you have it now, Christos. Okay, great. But, Thank you. And, and you're very welcome here. I mean, we, we are one of the things in addition to having expertise in supply chain and logistics, we're also looking for more technical talent. Jeff was, Jeff, Jeff was, Jeff, do you still consider yourself a, a software architect? Yes. Okay, there you go. So software architect at British Petroleum, BP. So, uh, so, so it's good to have technical skills that know supply chain and it's also good to know supply chain kind of stuff. So uh, we're, we're looking and, and that helps us, gives us more opportunity to be more in depth uh, here and whatever we're gonna do in 2024. So um, let's, let's go back, maybe Jeff, I mean, I. I looked at the list, Jeff, and you know, in addition to the things that I mentioned earlier, I I really like, and, and I'll just throw this out, and then I'll let you go through here. Um, Ned's idea on the EBL, right? You know, because mm -hmm. if you have money bill of lading, I don't know if there's necessarily is there going to never be one standard for EBL or. You know, it sounds like there's an alphabet soup, and maybe you have some flat, some ideas also, Ion, on this one. Uh, you know, can we do something there around standardization with EBL or add some value associated with that? So, Tom, can that you can you just um, show on the page you're looking at Ned's EBL idea? Because I'm I'm scrolling down the page and it's not popping out for me. Yes, there there you go. So Ned added a lot of oh down down in the comments. Okay. Yeah. Down in the comments, yes, about EBL, attended a webinar, and okay, maybe there's something we can do around electronic bill lading. I know the trade walls folks, you know, they're doing their own things, right? The DSCA, mm -hmm. the Digital Shipping Container Association, they're doing their own stuff. So right. I don't know if we can, one, either add value, or two, it just, you know, d d does it just gum up the works by go going down that path? We don't have Ned here to kind of talk about it, but um, okay. I, I I like the idea because it's kind of a fundamental type of document, right? Right. Um, you know, if you're going to do trade finance, you got to know that you actually got the stuff, right? <laughs> We've got um, a couple of contacts that I'm speaking with about bringing in B Connect, the Brazilian multilateral trade platform, and I think there would be some EBL talk there. So that that will be a very good. Okay. Uh, Good. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot what's going on. The only thing I know about it is, you know, it's even countries are trying to figure out what, how they. Uh, That's why having country, B Connect having, come yeah, in. The, there's no standard in. now. And one of the problems with supply chain gummy works up is with this whole thing with the bill ladies. They're not digitized. Mm -hmm. There's nobody's got a standard. So it's still paper. It works, it? Everybody's mm -hmm. got a standard. Yeah. This is why yeah. GS1 is doing so much work around standardization. And BSI is doing a lot of work around standardization. So I regularly see new standardization pilots and standardization programs around data for trade being announced. Yeah. You know, and we had the you know Global Blockchain Business Council on with Vita member last fall. Last year. Yeah. Right. And they're they'll probably go after this kind of thing. So I, I'm a little, you know, well, I like it. There's a lot of other people going after it. I don't know, Ion or Christos, if you, you guys have any thoughts on this EBL kind of idea. All, all I can tell you that there, there is a lot of the internal studies workings already being done in Turkey uh, regarding the regularity background, how the EBL solution would be used in Turkey. And the, I have a close friend of mine who is leading the studies uh in turkey and it will be appreciate get 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 her ideas uh, uh regarding the latest situation of the ebl in turkey and i would like to invite her one of into one of our meetings to get the clear picture of turkey's role within the 
EBL and the, that's why uh, when I see the EBL in the records of the wiki pages, I have been always thinking the white her the in one of our session. That's yeah, great. Um, Ayan, I do you want to reach out to her about right now we've got 321 so March 21st and April 4th are open and then yeah, after be, that the next the, the next open days are in June. It, 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 it might be the too early, but the, I, I will firstly get in touch with her and to get her idea whether she would be willing to join into such a session or or not uh, because dependencies of the English language is quite Got important. Yeah. It's quite important. And the, let me contact with her and the, I, will, I, will, I shall keep you informed. Thank you so okay. much. Good, good. So, so this EBL idea, so thanks Ayan for your input there. And Christos, if you have some input, you know, feel free to feel free to, to share on that. Um, any thoughts, Christos? Okay. Uh, you don't have to have any. Don't uh, don't worry. I mean, yeah, look, yeah, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm still uh, you know learning about the no worries, no worries. Say the terminology. So yeah. uh, you're talking you about standards. Been... You're talking about the ABL, which is uh, I guess the most important document on the on, on the on the value chain, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. No. No, no, we, it, be, what would be our output yeah. from something like this? If we take this on, what are we just having like, uh, speakers that come in? Are we doing a document? Are we what's our well, we could do a blog output? post on it, so it we could um write an article on it, put it out over the blog, post it over mm -hmm. LinkedIn, add it to our resource list. You know, we're, we're creating cool. this amazing resource library, which all of our past webinars are. Also, our ebook, all part of the resource library. So, if we created a written document about EBLs and how um, and and DLT use with EBLs, I think that would be a useful resource to a wide audience. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was just wondering what our output is on some of this. I've, I've dug deep, somewhat into the EBL a little bit about. Um, there's complications on those things because if you look at the optimized supply chain, the building mm -hmm. now has to have another concept because it could be fluid. Yeah. So somebody loads a bunch of stuff on a truck and gives you a bill of lading, that bill of lading because of IoT devices and AI may change before yeah. it's offloaded. So, so that concept isn't in the current bill of lading. But um, I, I can't remember who was struggling with the idea of backing up and saying the concept of the bill lady has to change if we're going to make it electronic. So it becomes this. Well, let, let's do this. On the, Somebody mentioned it, papers on it. Maybe it's Christos or something where those things come up. And that might be good to write about stuff, but it's like, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, here's what I'd like to do in the interest of time. Let, let's break this because there's some other good ideas that we want to look at. I mean, and whether and and you bring up a good point on the whether it's a blog post or whether it's a webinar, yeah. right? I mean, th those are also valid things. They don't have to be full blown projects or so. And just you know, to kind of come back here, we're trying to figure out a project that is somewhat something. And what I used last time, realistic, achievable, and valuable, right, for us to work on. And you know, <laughs> realistically, and and. I think I mentioned this last time. It's something that in the, the the corporate world or enterprise world could get done in you know a couple months, but with us as volunteers and we got our day jobs and all that kind of stuff, you know, it might take multiple months to do that. But we don't want to have something that's too big. And I'm a little scared on the EBL thing that it might be too big. And there's so many other places in there. So it kind of feels like either a good maybe uh blog post and or webinar right that has some has some mm -hmm. has some value for three to six months out there and then the world will change again right whereas if we can do something that maybe is provide some thought leadership whatever that may be and let me use that as a springboard a couple of the things that i saw that you had that were in the list here jeff um, I mean, we talked a lot about the NFT thing, so I don't want to talk about that this time. Um, the one that I liked 
that was, I like this one. This was kind of a technology one. Produce a diagram, right? It was kind of a process. Mm -hmm. How how would all this work? And I think some of this could come out of the work that you're going to share on. Yeah, the that's why I came up with that. That's I kind of like I'm that. I kind of like that. It's almost like providing a reference architecture, right? Right. For a little more techie, right? But could be valuable. And what what would be, you know, what 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 would that entail from a business perspective? So yeah, so I I've attended uh, through uh, Hyperledger and a bunch of meetups lately about the you know finance seg. I wrote that one yesterday about the finance seg. They show a supply chain. Making long story short, every time they, somebody talks about supply chain, these demonstrations they show these blocks of a truck in the warehouse and arrows going to the other spot and there's no underlying well wait a minute there's a lot that goes on there in those diagrams what, what are you folks actually envisioning I don't, I don't and so that's where this came out is the demo that i'm giving eighth is some detail what happens on a transactional level of blockchain with an optimized supply chain yeah. and so that, i'm going to show that live but then underneath that i put a document together that shows in detail what that is and then um how that ties in with fabric i have i would need a tech person but that's what that that is about okay so i can put a deliverable on that one that produces somewhat of a document I, um or, or i should say all of us it produces a document that shows what goes on at a transactional level on a blockchain instead of these circles and these pictures of a warehouse and a truck and a boat um but it's not that deep, it's not that complicated really to go down a few levels so um, okay if no, you want, no. I can send you a doc, uh, a graphic I created back in 2017 or 18. That's basically showing the, you know, high level starting at the farm, moving, yeah. moving along, like here where we're in the truck, etc. And then you yeah. can have, you can just use that to put the like what are the tech steps on, so right. that you're not starting completely from scratch. So 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 whole thought. So that's kind of. We're down in the stack, right? We're not an application level, but it's it's kind of the work that you would need to do as an IT person to take business needs, use case, whatever that is, and actually implement it. And you know, what's that interface, right? There's a little there's a little bit of mix. So hold that thought here. Um, and I don't know if any of you know this woman, Molly White, whoever read her stuff. She's basically a, a very she comes, she can come across as kind of cranky. She's a critic, <laughs> but I like, but she's a realistic critic of blockchain out there. And I put this up here. She basically, this guy, Chris Dixon, he's at A16Z, so Andres, Andreessen and Horowitz, right? And he's talking all, you know, he's a blockchain fan, blah, blah, blah. Here's why blockchain's so good. And she basically rips apart the book. Um, and okay, she's a critic, so she's going to rip it apart. But what finally, what she came down on was there were no numerics, you know, or no supporting cases that says, hey, here's why blockchain is really good. So there, and here's why it's valuable, and here's where it's real. I mean, they're all kind of fake things. I guess they really pushed helium. I don't know if any of you have ever been familiar with helium. It's a way, yeah. you know, you buy yeah. this helium. Yeah. You, Christos and Ion, you ever heard of the helium? Okay, I on real fast. It's a basically you 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 buy this little, think of it like a router, and supposedly you're going to collect tokens from people who you actually use your router out in anywhere. Is kind of the idea. It's never taken off. It doesn't. It, the numbers don't make sense. <laughs> you wouldn't buy this thing, <laughs> uh, router. I, I Tom, I, I bought it. So my son and I bought it, thinking, yeah, you provide a five G network for all your neighbors and. No, nah, it didn't work. So, <laughs> really, really, yeah. <laughs> Good to hear that. These, yeah, it's it was bad, and and you know it took forever to buy, to get it, and then we set it up, and it would it didn't do anything. So, yeah. okay, okay. Well, it it it'd be if nothing else, all of all of the things that she writes about, and I'm going to put this in chat here, um, what she writes about, and I actually I kind of I I do like her writing. Because, you know, she's not trying to, you know, say blockchain is horrible. She's trying to hold us to a standard that the rest of the, you know, the rest of the world, why hasn't this taken off kind of thing? And, you know, she's appropriately skeptical about crypto uh, and what they're doing. So you can look, take a look at this. You can read the, read the article, read, you know, 
read, write, own, building next era and her, her take on that. But one of the things, and this gets into what you're talking about with process here, is she mentions in the book, in her article, this article here, protocols, not platforms. So this gets a little bit to the standards kind of idea. And I'll take this link here and I'll put it in the link in a, in a uh, in chat, chat also. Thank you. I can't talk and type at the same time, which tells you that I'm not very skilled at multitasking. Okay, there you go. So, so this could be another layer of where we're abstracting supply chain types of standards. So think next generation EDI or EBL or whatever, but maybe at a more techie level potentially, or at a more, here's the interaction, not just defining the EBL, because you know that's one part of it, but also defining the interactions that need to happen between an organization. Um, and you can think about, the, probably the best example is think about how email works, whether you use Gmail or Yahoo Mail or Apple Mail or Outlook or whatever, they all go to the same system, right? They're different, different user interfaces in different ways that we all use email, but they all go into the same internet email. So EDI was hopefully going to be that case, right? It never quite panned out. There's been various and sundry platforms that have tried to be these sessions where suppliers and um, distributors and um, buyers can all get together, but those have all been kind of closed walls. So maybe there's something associated with creating a protocol. So I'll, I'll let you kind of scan this article and um, but think, think email and could we do something similar in supply chain and trade finance to create something? That could be an example. It might be too much also along the EBL idea, but I want to throw it out there as an idea, a thought. I put one of those in there around FinTech and um, FinTech is not bigger than people think it's not in the news. You can't do FinTech without a blockchain. So I, you know, she may be a critic, but you can't do FinTech <clears throat> without a blockchain. FinTech is in the billions out there. So how do you tokenize an asset and a, a, a mutable uh, storage system where people are trading and banks are giving loans? Yeah. You know, blockchain. I, 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 I think, think her mirror, I think her. So a lot of the questions that I've seen around it is the people that talk about blockchain and do a comparison about the numerics are they're very narrow. They don't seem to understand the scope. That's my opinion. Well, anyway, it, it, I mean, that's actually, uh, Tom, that's an entry out there I saw about why companies haven't taken up blockchain more. It, it, an entry where? And Molly White's thing? Project ideas. Okay, yeah. Okay, well, and I don't know where that one let, came from. Let me go back to that here. Um, you know, because I because I think there's something there. It'd be more around how do we make it positive? You know, how do we make it take off more or faster? Where is the business reasons? This one right here, right? Yeah, I, I forgot I put that out there. <laughs> Look, right. There you go. Now, another thing we could potentially do along that lines, you know, why it hasn't taken off? This is this is kind of the not so much. Here's all the 50 reasons why it hasn't taken off, right? Mm -hmm. Why, sh what, what sh needs to change and what could we do to help it to take off faster, right? Mm -hmm. We know how hard we had to work last year in order to get, what do we get, nine, <laughs> nine mm -hmm. solid answers <laughs> for our ebook, right? It wasn't terribly easy there. Mm -hmm. um, what could we do to make it easier? The other thing is, is there some sort of numeric rubric or calculator or metric, you know, supply chain metrics that we could indicate, hey, if you use blockchain, you can get a 20% improvement in this, right? Whatever that number is. So for instance, the UAE, UAE Trade Connect find, you know, platform, right? Because they implemented that, I can't remember, they were able to find $5 million worth of fraud, right? Where people were going out there and trying to factor in multiple places. So, you know, are, if we could put some metrics like that or something that blockchain really could do something about, maybe that could drive something. So let me stop there and see what those thoughts are. 
These are these are Tom's Tom's thoughts, just to kind of gen, engender conversation. Not that they have to be. The main one I've seen around it from some mm -hmm. Accenture and McKinsey reports is it's the same old with companies. Is they've got this legacy install that they spent all these millions on, and so to replace it all with a blockchain solution, the numeric the, the investment to do that and tear those out, the numerics have to be huge. Yeah, for those numerics. So how do you get? So somebody like SAP has got a. I think they got a blockchain platform, don't they? So they're trying to migrate some of the companies that have SAP trying to migrate them over to blockchain they, that way. They, they did. Remember. Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've also that. done some of the standardization um, pilots with GS1. Um, so they have they have certainly done some things with blockchain. If we were going to do something like this, I think rather than what are the business reading reasons for companies not adopting, we've got those numbers from the ebook. What about when does it make sense to adopt? Because for some companies that might not, like, when does it make sense for them? Not all companies need to be doing this. What are they trying to achieve? When, when does it become a good business decision? How do you know if blockchain is right for you? Basically, I mean, I've I've taught companies out of hiring me for projects because all I needed was a website and a QR code. And yeah. while I'd be happy to work with them on a blockchain, that they didn't need it. And I think, I think being proponents of blockchain for everything all of the time doesn't mm -hmm. make sense, especially considering the 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 environmental cost the cost of labor, the overall effort. I think we need to go back to when does it make sense and help help decision makers um, recognize that. Going going back to the numbers from the ebook. For some yeah. companies it really does. Uh, guys, I just I wanted to mention something we talked about the integration. Mm -hmm. the, the blockchain I worked at we integrated with core banking systems. And if anyone knows core banking systems, if you want to talk antiquated systems, they're uh -huh. pretty antiquated. I mean, they'd have never update them. But we were able to, uh, you know, integrate with, uh, you know, Fiserv and FIS and Jack Henry. So, um, yeah, I think if we address the integration issues, that can, uh, you know, really put a lot of people at ease. Because, yeah, it addresses that question of cost and labor and, and all that to integrate blockchain. I think that would be really interesting, you know, blockchain-based technology that's being integrated with legacy technology. That that could make for some really interesting presentations. That could also make for some really interesting writing. Fabric right. has built those into Fabric to make that integration easier in some of their, mm -hmm. in some of their um, uh, I can kind of like that. I mean, yeah. I, I, Ayan? Christos, what do you think of that? I mean, think of trade finance, you're probably talking SAP, right? Is right. Yeah, I know, I know. But I have been I have been thinking, I have been thinking regarding the whether whether it's possible or not, finding the firms, corporations, representative of the firms and the corporation who doesn't like the blockchain. Let's listen their ideas. Why do they not like the blockchain? Let's invite the representative of the big financial institutions from New York, from Chicago. Let's invite them and let's listen to them. Why do you do not like the blockchain? The big problem is that legacy system do never make the, any, my, any kind of the connection with the blockchain. They do not accept them any kind of the build, a bridge between their legacy and the, their uh, blockchain. Let's, let's listen to them. And to, let's try to understand them. Uh, maybe they are right. They would, they would, they wouldn't be right. But uh, it might be the good option to us to listen to them and to to arrange ourselves whether the blockchain would be needed in the long term or not. Okay. For example, all we all we have to consider the benefits of the use cases which we are going to develop. Uh, if the benefits would come from the users of the blockchain, it's okay, no problem. But in the long run, it may not be the possible to get the good results if we continue to propose, promote the blockchain. Mm -hmm. They are sitting on the chair, 
they are making the decisions and the, we are at the other side and they're trying to trying to promote the blockchain in a different way let's get let's get uh, let's get face to face with them and to try to understand their ideas uh, what the big what the big brothers are thinking i know that mastercard visa already developed so many pocs but at the end today none of them is working and that's that that that's why let's let's get in let's try to get in get with them and to try to learn their ideas behind of the why do not prefer the blockchain any block any kind of blockchain solutions so let's that's kind of let's yeah. let's be realistic i mean let's be realistic yeah yeah well and <laughs> I, I like the re I like the realistic part. I am definitely, yeah. <laughs> and I think that there, there's a lot to be learned from those conversations, if they're willing yeah. to share. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. But, but they 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 would pro they would accept to share, uh, to share their ideas, whatever it is. But the uh, the problem is to find the right corporation and the right persons to <laughs> to to share their ideas with us. Right. When we were doing yeah. the ebook, I did run across some stuff on the web. The companies had um, adapted, or were looking at adapting. They had pilot projects, and then they backed off. And the art and they explained why. I don't remember why, but there were some examples out there. Companies that had adapted blockchain and then had shelved it. Um, and well, there's lots why. of examples. I don't remember what the issue was. If it was numerics or what, or integration, legacy act. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, there's there's lots of examples of pilots. The, the hard part will be getting people to talk, right? right? Especially yeah. corporate folks who have budgets and say, "Yeah, I mean, um, out there," and and you know, do it doing it in a way that enables us to do something about it, right? And not just not just a complaining session, <laughs> right? Oh, it doesn't do this. Oh, it doesn't do that. Oh, it's, this is horrible, right? And, and I don't think that's what you're proposing, Ian. So I don't want to you yeah. know, I, I say in that. It's just I'll give an example of some something you're talking about real quick is um, the last project I did at BP had to do with the deep water global wells out in the middle of the ocean or deep water anyway because of a historic Gulf spill. Um, IoT data coming in from those wells and so forth. Um, there was a new way of bringing that in. So I, I was involved with architecting that system and getting it to run. And it turns out somebody in BP notified me that BP turned around and they've patented that. They got a US patent that they're licensing on the architecture. So here's a situation where big companies have a lot of legacy apps and they can pull some out and they can put blockchain in. They're not gonna talk about it, even if it's successful because they're not gonna reveal underneath <laughs> what they did. So are we how much of that are we going to run into or do we do we need to do we need to talk to companies is there enough literature out there explaining the why companies have not adopted it i think you bring up something really good about the companies not wanting to say they did it. often those companies they're not the one building it was it trust your supplier that gave me metrics on customer roi for adopting a new platform but their customer didn't want to be identified so this comes down to who who do we talk to? Right. It might not it's make the, sense for us to speak to the end users, but have the advantage. tech company to come in. Yeah, if it's a competitive advantage that they've, they've seen, they're not going to talk about it. Right, but the tech company might be able to come in and share yeah. what's being done and leave out the client information. I think it was mm -hmm. TYS, Trust Your Supplier, that didn't yeah. wouldn't let me use the client name, but they could yeah. give me metrics. Yeah. Well, and we we weren't asking for specific client names. So, I mean, no, we weren't. We're not Oracle or IBM or Microsoft where we need to say, "Hey, this is a reference." We just say, "If you're using Fabric and you got success from it, cool." There. So, so, so let's call this idea kind of maybe a listening project or something like that, mm -hmm. right? A listening project. Yes, that's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, oh, I, mean, I like that. We're gonna listen and hear what people are telling us or what they heard, right? Because sometimes even the, the uh, idea of them talking, it kind of gives them new ideas. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> As they're telling the story um, out there. Um, Tom, Tom, I just wanted to say one thing. The, when, I was, when I was at that blockchain working with FIS, they 
they almost like took credit for the the fact that they were offering blockchain to their customers. So, I mean, they did a lot of events and things like that. And, you know, we did all the integration and all the work, but they kind of were like, Hey, you know, here, here's what we're offering to you. We're on cutting edge. You know, if you guys need blockchain, we got it. So they use it as kind of like a PR play to enhance their relationship. So even though we were kind of doing all the work and they trusted us and all that. So I think yeah. they, kind of, and that was something we were worried about is that they were kind of taking credit for everything. So, but they, they wanted to do a big marketing campaign and, you know, say, Hey, you know, we can integrate with blockchain. We've already done it with these guys. Here's what we can offer, you know, our bank customers if you want to integrate. So. Yeah. I think that the days I don't know how long ago that was, Ned, if, if that was last year or two or last three years. Year. Last, when was it? Yeah, last year. So that was, it was kind of a company called Tacit out of New York City. It was private permission blockchain for banks okay. so they could process B2B transactions around the clock. So, but the private I, permission was issue, so. Yeah, and why I say that is what I've definitely seen in the last couple of years that the blockchain as a, as a um, reason for doing something is kind of gone in the background and companies will talk more about what they can do. And then, oh, by the way, the way we do that is via, we have a blockchain kind of thing. Okay. Um, so, so we want to balance that, you know, we're doing with supply chain and trade finance and even on this listening, do we want to focus or, you know, let's say on any of this, is there a certain area within all of the different things that happen within supply chain, logistics, trade finance, blah, 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 right? Where we want to focus. Is there a certain piece of all that that we want to focus? I mean, because because within any of those, there's all sorts of different metrics, if you will, that come into play, right? Um, and that may make it more achievable and realistic to do it. Because if we do, because I, I suspect if we did some sort of listening project, we could find lots of places. It'd be tied, how do we how do we take something out of it, right? That then is relevant and valuable for people in supply chain and trade finance world, right? Mm -hmm. And you look like you got something to say. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> As, as I said to you before, uh, we, 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 need, we need to find the right persons uh, how, having, the, how, not having the big and the large business experiences, not much more detailed tech, tech expertise, but the business vision is quite important to drive the tech. That's why, that's why I'm always trying to focus myself not on the tech side, because I am not a tech person. I'm always yeah. trying to put myself on the business perspective. Right. That, 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 that's why I'm trying to understand the tech and how I would make it the how I would create a business case depending on on that tech. Mm -hmm. That's that 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 that's that's why totally from the practical perspective, depending on my practical perspective, uh let's make the bridge of the two persons. Not the two technology. Forget the AI. Forget the uh, IoT. Those are all for me. That's why I need to connect the, the people. That that's that's crucial from my point of view. That's that, that that's why I, I would like to listen to the persons. I would like to give my own experiences to them, depending on my little or large uh, technical expertise. That's why I. Tech would help me to build the bridges between the persons. Uh, I, I would like to consider the tech uh, from that perspective. Yeah. Uh, oh. the, the, yes, I know. Hyper hyperledger is a technical is a technical uh, area, and the, this SIC is a technical um, uh, technical functionalities, technical expectations. But from my point of view, we need to make the full, full bridges between the ideas, not yeah. the technical ideas, but the business ideas. We need to find them. And after yeah. all, we need to build its structure based on the technical infra. Yeah. And that, that, that's why it will take time. 
but uh, when I look at the past exp experiences which have failed uh, on the blockchain, trade finance, and the, we need to do something else. Uh, yeah. That's that's why I'm trying to find out what would be the next uh, stage, next ways for, for, for the future, depending on our global experiences, which have all failed. <laughs> have all failed? <laughs> all failed. Okay. Yeah, we, we don't we don't need more failures, man. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We don't need any any new failures. That's why we need to understand the uh, financial institutions' expectations very well. We yeah. need to understand the, the SWIFT. We need to understand the US government. We need to understand the how the UK will expect the new technologies. Generative AI is the most popular one. We were not talking about it when I look at the four or five years ago. We were only talking about the blockchain. Yeah. That's why that, 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 that's why let's forget the, the technologies for a moment. <laughs> let's talk about the, the businesses that the global needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the, it's the business value that brings and what is the unique value add of blockchain, right? Absolutely, absolutely, and absolutely. Why you can't why you can't do it another way or why you could do it more efficient, efficiently and effectively using blockchain and more specifically Hyperledger, one of the Hyperledger projects. So let's do this. We got nine minutes till the top of the hour here. Okay. What I'd like to propose is let's see... Um, what everyone thinks is kind of their top three here. And, Tom, and I just Alicia, want to say, Alicia wants to say something. She's raising her hand. <laughs> I moved some of the ones that we've talked about most to the top of the list because you it was had, it was getting should, hard to find the ones. Uh, refresh my screen here. Yeah, is that refresh. What? And then Thank if you, you scroll to the tops, the ones we've been talking about most recently, I have added some notes and um, moved move them up. Thank you. Thank so you that people weren't having that. to scroll so maybe, up. Okay. AI is okay. Good. Um, one, we did. Yeah, just a couple minutes um, left. Maybe I didn't talk about that, Jeff. There's, there's one out there on AI, which I've been looking at a lot, and I've been you're, seeing. You're breaking up, Jeff, or maybe just meetings, for me. Meetings just, about it. So, okay. so um, I've actually stepped back and thought, well, instead yeah. of, let me take a look one at second. it and see what's feasible around what we can do that's so value, and then bring it, bring it here and say, yeah. you guys think. Well, uh, hold on one second. Right could you guys understand him? Because I oh. couldn't understand. Yes, I could hear him yep. as clearly as he usually is. Tom, I think it might be okay, so breaking up on your end. end. Got it then. Okay. Yep. Good. Continue on, Jeff. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say that one around the AI, it's up there somewhere about AI and blockchain, what's going on with it today. And there's just a lot of stuff around it, strategizing. And it's kind of like, I, I put that out here and it's very vague. And so I was thinking about taking the time. I've already started, but what actually is it? What are people looking at? And then put something together around it and say, does this look like something we want to get involved with this year? Um, even in that demo that I have, I have an AI example, how AI sometimes can steer things wrong with IoT and, and FinTech. And those things are combined. And so AI is important, but AI can also make mistakes, <laughs> which I'll demo. Um, and so... Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of tied in around people strategizing around it, but to go out and get a company that says we're doing this thing with AI, we've done this and we're we're rerouting things and we're blah blah blah. Um, that's gonna be hard to find. I just wonder. It's almost like I feel like can we publish something and say an optimized supply chain with AI in the future should look like this, and people could debate could even debate if they want. <laughs> okay. Um. I think what's going to happen on my demo on March 8th, is it, um, is if you guys see it, or actually maybe the run through, I'm going to show you what this is and then say, is this something we want to explore as a part, another initiative inside 2024 or beyond? Okay, good. Let, let's, let's, start, let's, let's go around the horn here and, and Christoph, so I'm going to come to you, then Ion, then Ned uh, here, and then Alicia and Jeff. Are these ones that, have been moved up to the top here, kind of this process kind of idea. Well, actually, that's kind of a slow. No, that's a little bit different. I think this is different. There, there were two. There was a process idea also of 
mapping out processes that could leverage blockchain effectively. That there was that thought also. I can't remember where okay. it is. Yeah, the, it's it's hard to right here, this one figure right out here. which one. Which one? Yeah, it's this one down here. Okay. See it? Produce a diagram or e guide. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'll br okay. I'll bring that up. Okay, move that up there. So so. It, are these things would be in your top four or did you have one other thing that you think should be different? And let's just do this fairly quickly here. I mean, we're going to need and just trying to get it down to some small number we can vote on. Christophs, you like these lists. Uh, is there anything else that we're missing that you think is we really should have in the in the in the voting? Yeah, I I like the list. I I find the the last one we talked about uh, particularly interesting and uh, useful, especially if uh, what uh, uh, I am is 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 the pronunciation correct? Correct. Yes, Christos. Okay. Okay. Nice to meet you. We are we, we are the we, we are the we are the Mediterranean guys. Yes, we are. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Uh, especially if it is true, which uh, I have no reason to to doubt, but hopefully it isn't. But uh, yeah, I was uh, looking into the trade lens uh, failure, uh, for example, uh, a while ago. Uh, it is interesting. It has many aspects on it. And uh, I think there is uh, a lot uh, to learn there. Uh, so yeah, to investigate this in uh, in any way, of course, listening is uh, a very welcome and uh, useful way always. So good. yeah, good, good. Thanks, Chris Boss. Ion, do you like this list here to vote on, or do you think that we're missing something? I I I I do agree with you, and the, I have no more questions. But I do promise to go on into details and add my own comments in the coming days. Okay, good. Thank you, Ian. Ned, you like this list, or uh, you you think we're missing something here? No, I like the list, and I'll just say that there's been a lot of blockchain talk at Manifest in Vegas. So I think uh, you know whatever I can do with the EBLs, especially, um, you know. Let me know. I mean, it's a lot of good. chatter. Okay. Vegas, Vegas and the blockchain is the good two topics. <laughs> what was that, Ian? Pardon? What did what, you say? It's a good topic? I, 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 I have learned that Las Vegas, there is a kind of event, something like that, about the blockchain. Okay. That, that's, <laughs> why, that, that's why I said that Vegas plus blockchain is a good two topics. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. That, that'll be our, our in-person meeting. <laughs> Did Daniela go to uh, Manifest? Was she there? I don't know. I, I, I haven't heard whether she was there or not. It's close by. She lives in the Bay Area. So I yeah, she could pop down. So, OK, Alicia, Jeff, any any thoughts? You good with this initial list here? I think, no, do we want to call the list just the top five? And I'll put in a couple of spaces below these five to yeah. make it clear that the, you know, I'll, I'll do something to make it clear that these are the ones we're focused on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And these are the ones we're focused on to try to figure out if we can do a realistic, achievable, and valuable project, right? Meaning with mm -hmm. our time, with our set of skills, you know, there'll be other people also that will be a part, but it's not going to be, you know, we have a cast of thousands here, right? Right. And we're not going to work on this full time. So. Oh, I uh, am. Did we, didn't we want to do it oh, six? Because we want the NFT. Jeff, we'll sign you up, sir. <laughs> we wanted to add in the NFTs one as well. So that would make it six. Ah, uh, yes. The NFT one. Because we had a long discussion about right. that. Right. Thank you. And we've, we've got Bobby coming in to present on nfts yes okay yes we did a, that's right we did have a long discussion uh, uh, let's add that in yeah so, so that's i've already added it if you want to um beautiful. refresh okay um if i can so also propose something last maybe a six and a half kind of thing 
uh, <laughs> I was thinking uh, that uh, maybe AI in blockchains could uh, turn into blockchain plus. Uh, my my thinking is IoT, you know, for example. Uh, so maybe since our uh, you know our base is blockchain, uh, we could turn the the AI in blockchain. Maybe uh, blockchain plus you know the, the the integration with other technologies. Uh, yeah, for example, uh, I would be interested in uh, AI uh, plus IoT. Uh, oh. Jeff uh, is more interested in uh, no, I, I meant blockchain plus IoT. Uh, Jeff is into blockchain plus AI. Uh, so maybe an asterisk there, uh, and, and we see how it goes. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I I did some pre preliminary work, and there's a lot out there. So um, block AI almost it, it, is automatically integrating with IoT, and how that's being used on blockchain. Um, yeah. And also, you, there's a reason why you okay. need blockchain. And I think when we're that, talking so. AI, we're, right now we're talking large language models like GPT and Bard, right? Anthropic. That's what they are. I have an integration open AI through Python, but there, there's that eight o'clock meeting on Mondays where they're starting to get, there's an AI Discord. Because we're not I talking machine it. learning types of stuff. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, there's oh, no stuff. AI in reality, but. What's that? My opinion. My opinion is no such thing as AI right now. It's all linear, linear modeling. Yeah, large language model. Okay. Generative okay. AI is the new oh, is okay. a new name, but anyway. Wait, well, so so we so our list has gotten longer, but I'm cool with that. <laughs> the good news is, is we have we have a lot of different ideas here. So I think Alicia, you can add in that. So we got we're gonna have six, I think, something like that. Here, here here's the gold here over the over the you know the next week or so. Take a look at this list. Provides a little bit of thinking in between you watching soccer this weekend or watching the Super Bowl, if you're here in the United States, um, take a look at the list and come up, you know, with, with kind of what you think are maybe a two or three that one you like has those qualities of realistic, achievable and valuable and can be netted out and ones that you would you'd be willing to work on and maybe do a one, two, three type of thing. And let's see where let's see where we go. Just put it just put it in the chat at the bottom. We're not going to have another call at least scheduled right now. Let's see if we can do it that way. I just re-added the link to this page to the chat. Everyone on the call right now, except for Christos, is already in the system with an LFID. So you'll get you'll be updated whenever anyone makes comments on the page. Christos, if you can create your LFID and then comment on the page, you'll be able to send it for automatic updates. Okay. So okay, thank you. Ryan, Ed. Yeah. Uh, Alicia, it makes sense what I just said about one, two, three. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. And then, then we'll we'll count votes. We'll put we'll put it into the some artificial intelligence session, and then it will tell us what the answer is. <laughs> no, <laughs> we will not do that. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, so I'm going to close it now. <laughs> I'm willing to stay on for a couple more minutes, but let me close it and stop the recording. Folks, thanks everybody for joining live here. If you watch the recording and you're here still, God bless, man. That's great <laughs> that you're mm -hmm. still here. Glad you're interested and we hope that you're going to stick with us here. So thanks. We're closing out for right now and I'm going to stop recording. How do I do that actually? More. Stop recording.